So it looks like Dragonflight has, has, has officially been announced for, for November 28th. This probably gives us enough time, like for, for people that play both, for people that play both Classic and Retail WoW, this probably gives you enough time to do uh, what you want to do in Wrath and get to do Dragonflight launch and have the content be like, fairly staggered nicely paced of the wording yeah like uh I, I think how they want to release this is it, it seems to me that it's actually gonna be pretty good uh i i would foresee that at the two month mark is kind of when you start to see a little bit of fatigue set in you're gonna have this point where most people like like i will say like an average guild will have max level we'll have a lot of their guys max level we'll have a lot of the content done they'll probably be raiding and they'll probably be they'll, they'll, they'll be doing achievements and it'll be kind of like maintenance mode for probably about a month there and then i think the new content patch will probably hit about a month after dragonflight launches and having the content from the two different versions of the game staggered out is going to be a good idea in general because there's a lot of people that play both versions of the game people i think originally assumed that retail would inevitably be more popular than classic but I and mean, we know that it's not right it's not it's not just it's not there's just not more people playing retail than classic like i've heard that directly from blizzard employee at like multiple points in time preach said something about it on, on a on a stream or a video that he did that he talked to somebody and said there's like more people playing retail than classic Shadowlands is a bad example yeah i mean it was this was during shadowlands and uh, at, at one point during it was actually the 8.3 patch in bfa was the first time i heard it which the 8.3 patch in bfa i was surprised because that was the worst time in classic the month before blackwing layer came out the one to two months before blackwing layer came out in classic that was whenever Classic like died for a lot of people. A lot of people just lost it and they just didn't want to play anymore. I don't expect to play Dragonflight the way that I play Classic WoW, right? I, I don't know if I'll ever play retail the same way that I like grind Classic anymore, but uh, I will stream it whenever it launches. I'll 100% stream it whenever it launches and I'll, and I'll have like a, an honest opinion about it and kind of what I'm thinking, all, the, all this stuff, right? I feel like a lot of Classic players like seeing from a, a, a fellow Classic guys perspective on things. They like seeing like kind of like my point of view on stuff and saying like, okay, how, how does he like it? He, he likes a lot of the stuff in Vanilla and Burning Crusade and you know, contractually obliged to stream it. No. <laughs> As someone who plays both retail and classic, that time frame seems too close to one another and then I'll get overwhelmed and have to choose one. I think it's a little close. I, I, my initial thought was that it's a little close and that's exactly what I thought, but I'm thinking about it realistically. I think two months is, is not gonna be, the beginning of Wrath is going to be very easy. There's not a lot, like, it'll be a lot of achievement forming and th there'll be stuff that people are doing. Uh, I think most of that is, most of the stuff to do is like collecting achievements uh, for more like the casual gameplay. And then there's, um, man, there's people doing arenas and PvP and that kind of stuff as well. So uh, I think in two months, you're going to hit like kind of a maintenance mode in Wrath because the first phase of Wrath is so easy. It is a joke. I, I, I was like, Dude, I, I don't know how many times, I was so adamant, so adamant about them buffing the entirety of phase one across the board. So like you had to buff literally everything. And they, they kind of did, they buffed uh, they buffed some things, but I don't think they buffed it enough. Like Nax, Nax is still a joke, uh, which is disappointing. I have not really even looked at the Paladin talents yet. I'm definitely excited about talent trees coming back. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in talent trees. I don't really know about this you know, diamond system. Like one of the reasons why Blizzard moved away from talent trees in the first place, they were like, oh, well, you know, there was the illusion of choice with talent trees because there was an optimal spec that you have to do this and you have to do that. So oh, that was one of the reasons there was that. Uh, and then the other reason was the, uh, they thought it was like boring to add things like percent crits or percent parry. They were like, oh, these things are boring because they're not like actives and stuff. But the truth is, this is what builds your character. Like this is this is, this is how you build your, like these, these, this is an RPG. These are like very core RPG elements, like getting your stats up and building your character. And uh, like, that's huge. If Blizzard wants to add talent trees back, the way that they had talents recently in the last few expansions completely sucked. You want to talk about illusion of choice? That was a massive, massive illusion of choice. So yeah, I, I, I am excited about talent trees coming back. That entire rant came out of me wanting talent trees to come back and... Um, wait, paladin, paladin tree, ta retribution tree. See, I, like, I hate this stuff, dude. They're doing the same thing, man. It's the same bullshit, dude. They're separating the class from the spec. Am I wrong? I hope I'm wrong. It's not, it's not that way? Okay. Cause whenever I look at this, dude, it immediately makes me like freak out. Like I like, I, I literally immediately got pissed. No, you are right. 
Okay, I'm just gonna play with it. I'm just gonna. I'm here. I'm just gonna play with it for a second. So talent. So lay on hands is now a talent. Heals a friendly target for a amount equal to 100% of your maximum health. Okay, so hammer of wrath is baseline. Oh, okay, okay. So if you are a prot paladin or a holy paladin, lay on hands is baseline. If you are a ret paladin, hammer of wrath is baseline. But then you have to choose if you want Blessing of Freedom, and you have to choose if you want Lay on Hands. Auras of Swift Vengeance. You learn or Retribution Aura and Crusader Aura. Dude, this is kind of, uh, hold on, I'm just gonna keep playing with it. But like, this is not looking good in my head so far. As I'm just trying to find anything to hate retail? No, that's not true at all, dude. I, I, I want retail to be good so bad. I, 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 I just, I pray, dude, that retail will be good because the best thing for classic is that retail is good. The best thing for retail is that classic is good. And anybody who thinks otherwise is a complete jackass. And, and it's, it's all ego and it's all just, it, it's all their own personal agenda at that point. You should want the other version of the game that you don't play to be good because it will make your version better. Trust me, dude. It, it, it's so good. It's so, so, so good for both versions to be good. Here's another problem with this. This is, this is one of my problems with this. I feel like they just took a bunch of, like they added a bunch of options here, but a bunch of the options are things that should just be baseline. Like I feel like Lay on Hands, Freedom, and the Hammer Rash should all be baseline. Whenever I talk about the illusion of uh, the, the illusion of choice, like this is it. Clean, like dude, what? Literally all this is is, the entirety of this should be baseline. Golden Path, Consecration heals you and your allies within it for 5% of attack power every one second. Uh, that's kind of cool, but no. Judgment of Light, Judgment causes the next 25 successful attacks against the attacker to heal for 7% of spell power. Blessing of Sacrifice, uh, Rebuke, you have to have Rebuke. Seal of Reprisal, you're damaging Holy Power, spent to deal 5% increased damage, 10% increased damage, you gotta get that. Sacrifice of the Just. Reduces the cooldown of Blessing of Sacrifice by 60 seconds. It's normally two minutes, now it's one minute. After your Blessing of Sacrifice ends, 50% of the total damage it diverted is added to your next judgment as bonus damage. Holy! See, that is cool. Oh, no, no. That's recompense. This effect's bonus damage cannot exceed 30% of your maximum health, and its bonus healing cannot exceed 100% of your maximum health. That is cool. They're allowing you to have more niche builds rather than a broad I can do it all build. That's the reason for being allowed to save multiple talent pages that you can swap to seamlessly. Um... Yeah, it's almost like a loadout in Call of Duty, but I don't necessarily think that's good. It's good in every way. I really don't think so, man. I really don't think it's it's just good in every way. Cause like, these are these are baseline abilities that like this is what a paladin is. Like, when I think of a paladin, there are some like iconic paladin abilities. Like, lay on hands, avenging wrath. I mean, just just for example, right? Like the divine shield. Like you, you name it. There's a bunch of like iconic paladin abilities that have been there for like 15 years. I think it's still better than current talents, which functionally have no customization. That is fair. Yeah, I think I think that is fair. It's better than what the, what, what it is right now, because what it is right now actually is, in my opinion, very bad. I will say this. To that point, this is super not boring. It's frustrating, but it's not boring. You know what, chat? I actually think so far this is not so bad. It's overwhelming at first, and it looks really, really bad initially, but Halfway through this, going through the Paladin tree, you have enough talent points to be able to get whatever you want to get. And you can get all your baseline abilities. Yeah, it's kind of similar to PoE, you know? Uh, I mean, hell, I, I, I can even see a world where the build that I came up with is like all damage, right? But I, I see a world where, let's say you're a PvP Paladin, and you want to go down this tree, and you want to get some of this like after image, Judgment of Light, whatever, you get some of this healing stuff, and you get, you know, you can get uh, of Dusk and Dawn. Right, when you reach five holy power, you gain uh, bonus damage and healing. When you're at zero holy power, you have reduced damage taken. Like in PvP, like you just always kind of have this thing where you're taking hits, right? 10% more damage and then 10% damage reduction and your abilities cool down faster. Okay, so let's take a look at this. A rep paladin. So each level you get one talent point in each. Is that is that how it works? Oh no, every other level. Is that how it works? Every level you get one or the other? I don't know. Art of War, your auto attacks have a chance to reset. Divine Storm. See, like, whenever you look at it at first, I'm like, dude, what the hell? Like, this is all stuff that should just be there. But it kind of works out that way. Uh, Crusader Strike has two charges. Reduces the cooldown of judgment. Holy Blade of Justice generates additional holy power. Blade of, increases the critical stance damage. Blade of Wrath. Art of War resets the cooldown of Blade of Justice 50% more often and increases damage. Imperium Power. Crusader Strike has a 50% chance to make your next Divine Storm free and deal 25% additional damage. Shield of Vengeance. Creates a, that's a wall, reduces all damage you take. So these are the two walls. Wake of Ashes, Righteous Verdict. Boundless Judgment. Judgment has a 25% chance to chain to a nearby enemy. That's kind of cool. Consecration, 
Periodic damage has a chance to grant you one holy power. Chances increase up to four targets within Consecration. Hold on, wait, maybe so con So Consecrate might be like actually good for, for PvP. That's kind of weird because I feel like it's not. Art of War causes Blade of Justice to cast Consecration at the target's location. Wait, so Rat Paladins now are just gonna have Consecrate all over the place. It's literally just gonna be like yellow. It's like somebody pissed on the floor. This is intriguing. Which is probably the best thing you could... I think the best thing anybody could feel about the game is that it's intriguing, right? Uh, Just Cry's Vengeance focuses holy energy to deliver a powerful weapon strike that deals 140% of attack power as holy damage and restores health equal to the damage done. Okay, so they finally got this right. I always said, so Just Cry's Vengeance is cool, but like, it sucked. I remember it cost five holy power instead of three holy power. Templar's Verdict cost three, and this cost five. Templar's Verdict did more damage outright, and this does less damage, but it also heals you. So they've reduced the holy power to three, and damaging is increased by 50% when they're stunned. I love that. So now if they're stunned, now I'm cranking damage. That's how it should be. It like there was no choice, right? Like they gave you this ability that like kind of has a cool design, but there was no choice. There's never like a, a legitimate usage for Justicar's Vengeance. Like, why would you ever use this? Okay, we seem to be at an impasse. Uh, I've tried to get every talent. Dude, Dragonfly is gonna suck, man. I freaking hate dude, these, dude, these talent trees are so terrible, dude. I hate this. Why can't I just have every one of the talents? I just want all of them. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. I will say after looking at the talents and after kind of throwing a, my initial reaction and probably a lot of your guys' initial reaction, was kind of pissy and kind of threw a fit about it. I'm kind of intrigued now. That's the best thing you would want, right? Like if somebody making a game, you probably you want people to be intrigued because then they're gonna try it, you know? Let's watch this video. The dragon You're far too reasonable, my bad. Frick everybody. The dragon flights home. As it was meant to. Open your mind to what is yet to come. I mean, when it comes to visuals and stuff, dude, I, I think that uh, WoW's always gonna look good. Right, like graphically, like the art design and stuff, it almost, almost always it looks good. Almost always. You're far too reasonable, so it's far too single. Yeah, I mean, he was joking, Clayton. But he was being sarcastic. And that's sarcastic, but he's being so happy. You balance upon the cusp of destiny. All that matters is this moment. I think like visually, I think, yeah, I think it looks great. The only thing is, I just really don't like Drakthir. See, this would have been good too. This would have been great. Maybe a little bit smaller legs and smaller waist. There's a video of three added bulkier body type options. Wait, they, they actually did that? Oh. Okay, well that's a little bit better. It, it, it is better. It's not like really good, but it's like, I, I like the idea of the other one with like a big, like broad chest. Oh, hey. Yo. What are you guys talking about? Uh, we we're talking about dragons. Cool. The next WoW expansion got announced. But, for, but for retail WoW. Yeah, so, uh, people are getting kind of <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. 